unboxings and then two come along at once. <laughs> we are spoiling you. Well, we're spoiling ourselves, really, because, you know, <laughs> we're the ones who get to play with them eventually. Nandy narking. Good fun. Nope, that, that's what it means. Nandy narking. Good fun. Clever use of the old Victorian slang there for a game set in old Victorian Dickensian times. Part fact, part fiction. I have no idea how this one slipped through our radar. Possibly because half the time we don't pay an awful lot of attention and we kind of rely on things literally sliding into view and going, oh, that's shiny. Let, 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 let's, let's all buy that. Um, I think this probably kept along right about the time where we all went, why are we all buying copies of the same game when we play together? Let, let's be clever. Let, let's kind of debate it and, and choose which games to buy. And somewhere in that time zone a couple of years ago, this one slid through and uh, we missed it. But we haven't missed it now. And because we've got it now, well, we're going to open it and show you it. So there you go. Um, if you've already seen it, skip on. You, well, you can watch it if you like. Maybe we'll say something about it that, that you haven't heard, even though you've probably played it. Who cares? Um, where did I put that blade thing? There we go, blade thing. So, do 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 do. See, nice picture in the back. Oh, do do do. Isn't it lovely? Little buildings and little people. Like you know, this is so far up our street that we practically live on this street. So we were all a bit gobsmacked um, whenever we did kind of click on to its existence. Went, why do we not own this? I digress. Ah, oh, it does. Even though it's even though it's old, it still has it still has new box smell. Winner. <laughs> Ooh, unexpected way to find things packed up. It has received a little bit of, of shipping damage, unfortunately. But can live with that. It's only a box. Dry your eyes. Oh, it's got a dent on it. I don't want that on my shelf. Oh, oh well, go away. Uh, so we have two rather large decks. All oh, right, because they're so big, they've had to invent this to literally stop them rattling about the place. Fair enough. Put those over there. Look as he carefully puts them in shot. And then I suppose, oh, that goes all the way down the sides. Jakers. Right, we better keep that. I just found a missing paintbrush. Bonus. Um. So what we got here? We have player aids. So a nice little reference card. Kind of subdued. There's quite a bit packed on here. Funny thing is, there's a lot of, of stuff that you'll see here, but in actual fact, this is this is a remarkably straightforward game. Um but we'll we'll come to that. We'll we'll not worry about that. Let's let's continue with the unboxing part of it. So there we go. Loads of information crammed on there. You've got all the different little icons and what they're all going to mean. You've the different zones of the city and what bonus they give you if you control those. That's kind of handy to have. Got our player sequence. And it's a three-step sequence. So, you know, simple. And then details. And then on the back here, we've got the events that can occur. The personality cards. And then alternative personality variants. Basically, what they've done is they've built a game, and then they've kind of gone, well, you know, hmm, our game seems to be remarkably straightforward. Oh, that, that, that's not what we expected. Let's make it harder for people so they'll play it again. So you've got kind of the ordinary play, and then, oh, you think you're quite good at this now, do you? Well, try it this way then. Ha <laughs> ha. And I kind of like that. So we got those, and then again, I just I'd love it when people bother with this sort of thing, just doing stuff that 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 plays with the setting. So we've got that kind of crazy Victorian funk, like you'd have seen on, you know, well, you'd have probably only seen in movies and stuff, but you know, posters at the time, things like that. So it all kind of looks like one of those sort of billboard posters of the year. I just like it when they bother with this. Um. It's different characters, who's who in London. So we've got Sherlock Holmes and Professor Moriarty, Fig and people like that. So there's fictional characters, there's real people, and there's a whole kind of mix 
of Victoriana going on here. Um, so there's, there's kind of like a character for everybody, really. The rule book is fairly meaty. Fairly, not heavily so. Um, again, like this, nice layout. Look at that, look at that map. Even just even though it's just a picture of the, the old London map, it just looks inviting and engaging. I, I like that. Um, and yeah, and there we go. There's there's playing and there's winning. That's it done. And then different end conditions that can occur depending on who you've been playing. Explanation on the action card. So it's not just all churn, churn, churn. You've got everything broken down again for you as you would like. All the symbols, what they're meaning, nice and clearly. So think even for your first couple of games where you're inevitably going to be referring to the rule book. Just because what does that symbol mean? What does that allow me to do? Once you've kind of got that, this, this snaps along very quickly for you. Through to the area cards, the action cards, and what they allow you, and then a little bit of an FAQ. Oh, but in the random events there too. And then the advanced rules. Dun, dun, dun. And variants for agent and building cards as well. There we go. Lovely. So, you know, it's... That's 16 pages. I think the last one we looked at was a, was a whole 12 pages. So it's you know it's a it's a media rule book by being four more pages. Duh. But it's more it's more qualification for what things are rather than struggling through how to actually play it. How to play is fairly straightforward. Okay, so nice little rule book. We've got our coins. I personally, now I'm, I'm generally one of these ones that goes, what's in the box? I'm happy to play with it. And I kind of like these. It's simple enough little coins. Two sizes, two colours. If you're not great with colours, the two sizes distinguish the lesser and the greater value. That's fine. I just kind of like the idea of using metal coins for this. I kind of like the idea of having like a little leather purse or something like that there and being able to clink, clink, clink coins out. With my little fingerless gloves and my top hat on. Oh, I need a top hat. Anyway, there's the board. We'll have a go at that. Now, this is quite a big board, so we'll probably not fill it all into the screen. But I just want to get to these. I want to get to these. These are lovely. I love them. Um, again, fair play to uh, Phalanx. They've given us loads of baggies. We like getting baggies in a box. It doesn't cost you an awful lot to do it. But it means we've got something to store our stuff in. But we've also got a storage tray. So these are more for your tokeny bits um, than those. And really, tokeny bits, there's coins. Coins and cards. After that, what, why, why would you take your stuff out of this and, and change it around? And look, a proper, a proper dice. Like a role-playing dice. That's for stuff that happens. So... So uh, yeah, I think you could probably do with seeing this a little bit closer. So we've we've come a little bit closer, so you can actually get a bit of a look here. Okay, so without rattling through everything necessarily, look at that. Isn't that just class? Like. There's detail that's been applied to these playing pieces, and they could have probably got away with about a third of it being there, frankly. Um, so you have these different little buildings that you'll have the opportunity to erect in the game. Um, some of them will give you particular advantages. Some of them simply just mark that you know, you've know you got something in the area, and you can only have a certain amount of uh, buildings sort of on the table. But these are just, they're just darling. Ah, hotel. It's even got the hotel sign on it. Yeah, well, fair play them. Um, it is the same buildings for all the players. And that's fair enough. I can live with that. Little townhouse. Because you could see these being slapped down side by side and people being quite methodical about uh, building their little towns. But that's, that's not part of it. It's not about how it looks. It is just about... Area control. More sort of run down little slum there. That's just cute as well. Like it. And then you've got so that's that's kind of your housing. These little tokens here. 
These are used to uh, indicate that there's, there's conflict in an area. So where there's one of these tokens in play, you can resolve a conflict and any time you place an agent on the board, you'll locate one of these into that zone to show that conflict can now sort of take place there as well. So they're conflict tokens. And then we've got our little people, our little characters. Um, and these are sort of your agents and whatnot that you can have about the place too. So again, everyone's got the same, the same figures, but just in their team colors. But again, you know, this could have been done with tokens. It didn't need the amount of effort. Like he's going, to, he's going down a sewers. Lovely. I think we've got a little uh, paper seller there. Tilly, Tilly, read all about it. Jack the River strikes again. A little flower seller. Look at this. Did the penny farthing. I just love them. They're just class. I mean, this <laughs> McCain, this is one of these ones you're like so raging that you missed the tank. You think it's so cute. Why did I not have this? Look at that. The suffragette. Now, like, that is just. That's just brilliant. A little iron rail. She's handcuffed herself to it. Fantastic. They're, they're, um, they're not far. Not far of 28 mil. I think they're probably closer to about 20 mil in case we've got anyone watching this and thinking, oh, could I use these in our games? You probably could kind of get away with it. I mean, I've got, um, well, I've got the Osprey Games figures nearby. They're a little bit smaller than them, and they're they're essentially 28 mil. I don't have anything else to hand, oddly. So he's, that's, uh, he's got his, like, shotgun or something, or his, his, I think it's a shotgun or a walking stick, and his greyhound. Oh, we've got a toff here. Looking fine and elegant. And uh, I believe this lady brought possibly a governess or something. It's kind of beside a little writing desk. Maybe it's Jane Austen or something like that there. I don't Don't know why I picked Jane Austen. Because she's the only one you remember. And we've got like a sailor or somebody working from the docks. I think it's a sailor. Because it seems to be. And it's that sailor or mailman, possibly. I think it's a sailor. Yeah, because it's got that kind of shoulder thing going on with the uniform. And then there are a couple of other characters that come into effect uh, through through game uh, stuff. I can't remember what they all are, but we will come to them. But just lovely wee details for things that, frankly, we figures for some strange reason. Instead of instead of a placement, it's it's probably a strange reason that I've just missed uh, in the game so far. But it's a guardsman with a truncheon, clearly battering people. Get away from the palace, you scum! Probably something along the lines of that. There's four of those. So there we go. That's the close up look at those. So we had to come in close for that. So you can kind of see why there was like a bit of excitement over that one there. It's um, it's just so pretty, and they they that like their bits like that. They make me happy. Um, we'll put that back into the box. We'll put them at the bottom actually. So this board now we just don't have the setup at the minute where I am. Uh, again, if we were doing this uh, as our normal sort of group effort, we could. Oh, get all of this out for you to see. Um, but when it's just one of us, but we can get a fair, we can get a fair bit of it down here for you, and that'll be enough to sort of give you the, the concept of what's going on. Okay, and you're you, yeah, you're looking at a nearly two thirds of it here. To be fair, even though the board's quite big, there's there's a there is a lot of wasted space. Um, and I think really the zones are big to allow for when you're at full capacity of players 
all those buildings being about the place so everyone isn't sitting on top of each other and it's easy to see things and get tokens in, get tokens out, stuff like that there. But essentially the, this this is your board, so it's ye old London town, looks lovely. There's a tonal difference between all the regions. They've all then got their name on them to tell you which district it is because there's cards refer to all those and there's a reminder if you control those areas the things what you will get for uh, having that sort of each turn or whatever and it's lovely and everything's there's lots of little labels so you've actually got like trinity street and southwark road southwark bridge blackfriars bridge london bridge you know st paul's cathedral all the landmarks here the um vincent square the Houses of Parliament, Westminster Abbey, Battersea, you know, it's all, it's just, it's just lovely. <laughs> it's all I need to say about it. Stop going on. It's just lovely. Um, so definitely really like that. little reminder that the bridges are two-way. Don't know why that's there, because I'm, I'm not convinced that I've read anything that tells me that that's completely relevant. But it's there. Maybe it's, it's in the variant rules. I think it's in the variant rules. So you know you can come across areas like that, um, and then if I flip it over, you'll see the other side because again the variant rules, variant aspects of the board as well. Um, so you go. It's essentially the same thing going on, but it's it's got much bigger divides. It's very distinct districts. The tonal differences have all come in here, and the areas are demarked by sort of these neutral zones as well because you have to move into them to get to certain bridges and stuff like that there too so just a nice looking board just want to play it need at least need at least one other person it's two to four uh three to four, well it's three to four but there's rules there's rules for two um or did we actually get that wrong did we get that wrong <gasps> we could have got that wrong if we did because we haven't actually edited it all yet, we can fix that glaring mistake down there. I'm just going to grab the box and just double check. Yeah, it is. It's two to four. Yeah, because that was part of the driving force in my head going, well, you know, I only need one other person to be able to play it. But we, we've made a little mistake down there, which round about now... <laughs> kind of temporary fix. But it'll do, because we're class like that. See? Look at that. It's almost like you wouldn't have known. <laughs> okay, so we've had a little look at that. Let's give a quick look at some of these cards then as well. The game is it's essentially driven by this and money. Um, but the, the, the money is more of a consequential thing rather than than the actual mechanic. The cards are what is going to drive the game for you. Um, to, to, I'm trying to struggle to sort of think what to compare it to. It's going to be a, a bad comparison. Um, I'm going to say for, for a minute here, Dominion. Um, but it's not linger. You've got a hand of five cards. You're always going to have a hand of five cards. You'll play cards, you'll draw back up. You can discard cards for card effects, you'll draw back up, etc, etc. So you always have your, your five kind of main cards going on. Um, but there are a couple of different card types. So we have, for example, boop, 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 just make a show what I've got here. So there's all those different little characters that we've seen for your agents. Uh, Tosher, the gentleman, the flower girl, the paper boy, the jockey. Ah, it was a jockey with the greyhound. There we go. Cyclist, suffragette, the maid, uh, little matchstick girl. Ah, that's what she couldn't quite figure out what she was doing, little matchstick girl. Street girl, the lady of the night, seaman, Governess, we were right. I like that. Uh, oh, and that's one of the characters. And there's Professor Moriarty. And Mrs. Hudson. Uh, uh, yeah. Sherlock Holmes housekeeper, in case you're not well enough read. Okay. The character cards are going to sort of give you what your objective is, whoever you are, and what you need to win. 
Um, so like Professor Moriarty, at the start of your turn, uh, you have agents in a certain number of areas you will win immediately. With two players, you need 11 areas. With three players, you need 10 areas. With four players, you need nine areas. So everyone's going to get hidden uh, objective cards through the character that they're dealt. Nobody else know. You can you can kind of, because you can look at your reference card and see what all the characters do, you can try to sort of deduce who is who. Because if you're able to make a stab at sort of figuring out who is playing what characters, you will be better armed to try and take actions that will actually thwart their plans. So that's a, a little subtlety. Uh, Dr. John Watson. Now we've got locations. Charles Babbage. These are all going to be a little bit uh, mixed up. Clearly just obviously from the way that the game throws them out. Benjamin just really... Yeah. So that's probably enough for now to give you the general gist of it. So characters, noted by those backs. Um, there's a host and there's more over in the other set here as well. So as I say, these you will get, Sherlock Holmes, um, these you will get and they'll give you your win conditions, what you need to do to try and win the game, hidden from your opponents. You've got these sort of specialist agents that you can deploy, and then what your agents will do for you, what what having them in a particular zone, and what they'll be able to do for you in terms of bonuses for the game. Now, we've said about being card driven, and this is this is where the bulk of that comes. These are your action cards. There's a host more here as well, by the way. But essentially the cards will have what you do, okay? and then an order sequence of stuff that they also deliver. So Billy here, place one agent in an area in which you have a building, okay? Uh, Charles Dickens, earn one pound for each trouble marker on the board, okay? And then they will all have little symbols, and you must do the symbols in descending order of what they are telling you to do. I guess it does have an impact, I suppose it would, because if there was money and it was last, you didn't have any, and you got it, it might allow you to do something else. But they're everything from placing agents on the board, uh, putting a building on the board, uh, putting a law officer down, getting money, uh, drawing more cards, um, stopping an action, removing agents, and all importantly, chaining cards by playing another card. So I mean if you played Benjamin Disraeli as your card, Benjamin Disraeli's finishing act allows you to play another card. So you can play like you know, Mary Morstan, which then allows you to place an agent and then allows you to place a building. Okay. And and that's literally it. Some of them won't have any text at all like yourself. So you just play that and you would just place your agent, place a building. Boom. Simple. But if you have completed the requirements to have like two buildings in a region, you'll get that region's town card and automatically, as long as you still control that region, you'll get the bonus every turn for what that region gives you as well. That could be more money, it could be more influence, whatever it happens to be. And then there are cards for variations on the board, because remember the board is double-sided. So for the variations in the game, there's a set of cards that just mix it up. They do all their things, but they all do similar things. That's the nice thing. Once you've learned the mechanic for the, the, the sort of the base game, if you like, your variations add complexities to make that more interesting and make it a new challenge for you to come back to. Boom. The money is there to fund things. You get paid money, and there's like one of the goals can literally be to to be the richest person to get like sixty-six pound, a vast sum, I say. Um, some of it can be about controlling the most regions. Some of it can be about having the most agents in the board. Some of it can be having conflict deployed. So there's loads of different ways to win depending on who you get. And of course, part of the fun then is going through the game and getting to play those different combinations of characters, not only for your own benefit of trying to win a different way but also seeing how they interact with having other players because suddenly everyone's constantly 
trying to do their old thing. And that in itself kind of delivers a sort of a, a sense of that kind of Sherlock Holmes type of thing going on, little backstories and undercurrents of what everyone's doing as they're trying to manipulate the board to their benefit. And working at cross purposes, purely by fluke, or deducing what your opponents are actually trying to achieve, and then actually setting out to try and complete your own objectives whilst at the same time thwarting theirs. There's, there's just a beautiful simplicity about that. And uh, yeah, as I say, at the very moment, I can finish getting my head around rules for this and get one other person to the table. But it's like us. We haven't got playing this yet. We've only got looking at it. We've got seeing it being played. And that then sort of clicked, well, oh, we need to have this. Um, I don't think this is a game that you're going to get the enjoyment and benefit out of after one or two plays. I think this one is going to be sort of five, six, seven games down. You're really going to start to find where this game's at. And you're probably going to be taken aback how quick it actually is. It's a big game box with a lot of stuff in it and a lot of variations, but I think it's actually a very fast game to sit down and play. So this isn't going to be your all-nighter. This is actually going to be, you know, a night where you get maybe through two or three medium-sized games or a couple of good goes at this. And I think that is nice in itself. It's got the size and feel of a weighty game, but this is actually one where if you've got that, I just, you know... I want to play but I really can't be bothered it's going to be able to cope with this and you can be sitting there thinking oh, I wonder who he is and what's going to do it I'm going to try and do that oh yeah I'm going to do that I'm going to do that and the, the, the consequence is the cards that they're playing will still do all the stuff and will still throw curveballs at you but you can still sit there and work against them so yes I will find my fastest and laziest chum who's kicking about and and there's still some nice days where I can actually manage to be outside and play in the garden or something like that there. Definitely do check uh, Nanty Harking. Nanty Narking. Keep going to say a name because it's just the, the, the shape of the letter. Do check it out. I think this is a little gem that we've certainly unfortunately overlooked, as we said. If you haven't overlooked it, bully for you. Let us know what you think. Give us a comment down below. Let us know what your games have been like, what you've enjoyed about it, what you haven't enjoyed about it. Any tips? You can forewarn us of or good combinations. What's the best way to, to tackle it? Um, because I always like hearing about other people's games. Play more games. That's what life needs. Instead of playing games with people, play games with people. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, folks. Hope you found that in some way interesting. I certainly did. I loved it. Can't wait to get the grips with this properly now and stop shaking the camera because I'm just getting too excited. Give us a subscribe if you can feel so inclined. And uh, if you're about the old Facebook page, We Gamers in the Bunker Club, always up for a like if you've got the time. Thanks again. Bye-bye.